Hello, everybody. It is Jason, and today I am with three wonderful people from Power Up Gamers, Role Players for Accessibility, or PUG for short. Uh, so we have uh, Laith, we have Jaren D and D, and we have Brian, who are all members of the community. I nice see you guys. Good to be here. Nice so, to be here, Jay. So first thing I want to jump on, um, because I've done a review for the Gats Tome of Amazing Creatures Volume 1, but I know that you guys have done a very successful Kickstarter recently for Volume 2. Um, so first of all, congrats on getting 60 backers for that. Um, and I know you've been telling me how busy you've been uh, with the Kickstarter. Um, so firstly, when are you hoping to get this new volume released? It it's supposed to be released to our backers on December 15th of this year, and then on Drive Through RPG the next day, and soft covers probably a week or so later. Fantastic. So you're, you're pretty much almost there by the time this comes out. Um, so in terms of the GAT as a whole, I know that you want to do three volumes in total, and I know that you told me that the, the last one you want to release on Halloween. Um, firstly, before we go into the actual setting of the GAT and your creation, Jaren, um, what was your aim in terms of releasing these these three volumes of monsters? Um, it, it was just kind of a thing in, um, we've used it at my gaming table for 30 plus years for quite a few of the monsters and s some of my regular players online have seen some of the monsters as well so it was something that uh, the community as a whole hadn't seen and, and we thought people would enjoy them so mm. Um, we also felt that it was a good. We also thought that it was a good place to start in relation to um, what would be interesting to a large number of people. The stuff that um, we're putting forward, for instance, um, in Tome Two, there's the Cacticorn, which I personally find really, really cool. <laughs> It's a hedgehog unicorn. It's awesome. Um, and, you know, uh, these different uh, bits and bobs of different ideas that do not necessarily have to apply, do not necessarily have to be slotted into, a cons you know, like a consistent world or anything like that. But just from the point of view of this is an interesting idea. We also kind of have the other side of it, which is, you know, Power Up Gamer is role players for accessibility. And pretty much all the monsters are in some way, shape, or form. Um, they kind of give a different experience. And these different experiences can kind of activate and work on the different peoples um, that is kind of involved in. Um, some, you know, one of our, um, one of our beasts, um, the Psychic Ooze, if I have the, rem if I remember it properly, yeah. the name properly. I the psychic ooze. Yeah, um, it communicates is uh, clearly psychically. However, it communicates completely non-verbally, and this can kind of appeal to people who wouldn't be interested in, uh, you know, um, catering for people with different with different abilities. But you know, in, because it's just an interesting idea of like imagist stuff. But also it would, it's kind of a good toolkit for helping people who have sight impairment, hearing impairment, any of these things in order to kind of like um, build and go in your own direction. Yeah, and a lot of the, um, the creatures, certainly from volume one that I've read through, um, they are... Um, they are different, they're, they're unconventional from the types of monsters that you, you tend to get in a lot of monster manuals. Um, I did mention that there was a really quite an old school vibe and a few of the monsters definitely reminded me of the really old fighting fantasy yeah. type monsters that you get where they're so kind of out there and, and crazy and awesome. Um, whereas I think nowadays maybe there's a little bit of reining in of, okay, the monster, it has to be able to physically do this or, or mentally do that. Um, so is that something that you wanted to do and that you just want to say, okay, forget forget all of the you know criteria for 5e, let's just go and do whatever? 
Yeah, um, when we originally make it, like I said, several of the monsters have been out 30 plus years, so we've seen different editions and slightly different versions of the monsters as, as to update them. Um, but really, when it comes down to the core concept of the monsters, we were like, the just isn't any limits, no rules on what we can or can't do. So in terms of um, sort of comparing the two, because again, I've only read uh, the first one and the monsters in there overall are, are very, very powerful. What do your fans get to expect in terms of volume two when it falls into their hands around Christmas time? Uh, well, it's same style, same feel. Oh. Different D hundred table, all, but all the same sections, and so I in line with volume one. We did have a better selection of CR ratings for this volume. It just when we divided up the monsters between the three for some reason, and the first volume had had CRs higher than 10 mainly. And this one, we got all the way from CR1 to uh, CR30. Um, we also kind of included into this, um, like another aspect, um, whereas I guess you could say that um, Tome 1 was... Uh, had a pretty loose theming of like extra planar creatures and um you know high end this is the kind of things that you would find that have gone far beyond you know the realm of possibility these guys are a bit more homegrown and um to a certain degree more neutral as a result they can kind of you know you like it gives the players more possibility to engage with them not only by cutting them to bits, but also by talking to them, but, you know, uh, communicating with them. Um, I think of this as kind of the ally book as opposed to the, um, you know, to, to the monster book. Yeah, it's an interesting way of looking at it, I suppose, because, again, it's like if you have a monster manual, loads of systems have monster manuals. Um, sometimes they like to call it slightly different things if it's sci-fi. But... Um, it is still very much okay. Here is a list of entities that you will be facing at some point. So that's a really good way of looking at it and that you kind mm. of have a, a different perspective with the second book. Having said that, um, I am aware that uh, this third volume is also going to be coming out on Halloween and it has some really quite nasty things in there. So um, are these going to be yes. stupidly powerful? Are these the big bosses at the um, end? It it it's a range, range, range. We have creatures it's like the bone or board in it, which is like a CO three, a, a, a. But one of my favorites for those who are way old school, who remember the creature the Thor, we're bringing back a new version of it. It's almost like a new manifestation, if you will. Oh, yeah. And I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy it when they see it. And is Volume 3 going to be on a Kickstarter as well in the future? Yes. Uh, so we're hoping to launch a Kickstarter for it in May. May. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all of you watching, you've got the, the first volume. Wait for the second volume. Keep an eye out for May. Um, and we'll get that Kickstarter backed as well. Um, so talking a little bit about the, the setting now, because you said that, you know, going back 30 years or so, you've had this setting in your mind. Um, so how did how did that come about, that original setting for which these books are um, like? Back, jeez, must be almost 35 years ago. Oh. Oh, I like a lot of DMs was kind of thrown into the DMC because no one else wanted to DM. 
And, and I'm not a big fan of using in modules or, or particular settings, although I like taking bits and pieces. So I just t told my players, hey, I'm homebrew in my setting. You don't get to know nothing about it except for where they're at. And I throw them in a little boondock town and their, their adventures throughout 18 months where they shaped basically the first continent. And, and then all my players since then have added stuff to it. Some of the monsters were uh, suggestions and jokes made by my players. Is, and now it is what it is. And hopefully next year we might even see this uh, setting and guide released at East as well. I was going to say, I, I heard something about um, a setting guide and the, the fact that you, you said, oh, you know, it's a good start to have a monster man. It did imply you had more things in the works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot more things. That's fantastic. Um, so I, I know that obviously Legat forms a big part of um, Power Gamers, but I know it's not everything. Um, and I know, Jaron, you've talked to me in the past about some ideas for projects you've got. And I know that you guys do a lot of, of different projects simultaneously. So what other kind of... Um, projects have you got in mind i know that there's the the fiasco um play sets that you've done um but i believe um there was some other sort of accessibility books you wanted to release is that right yes we have a, a special need a pdf uh, that we're working on basically the first half talks about six or seven types of special needs it's um kind of signs that people show who have this uh, and kind, kind of just some general tips on how to deal with it if you have a player or a, a GM who has this. Um, the, we, yeah, like... Yeah, we... Um, like the structuring for this particular... Uh, for this particular book is designed to be um, simultaneously like um, beginner friendly and um, I mean I, I got in my head the the video game thing of easy to learn hard to master but that doesn't really <laughs> apply here I'm afraid yeah. but all the same that kind of is the idea it's designed for somebody who's just starting out GMing or you know really experienced at the work but they're just coming across um, a person who they have particular or worries about, um, you know, catering to their needs. That can that doesn't necessarily mean anything on the uh, on the um, learning spectrum or anything like that. Uh, we're talking about anything from sight impairment to uh, mobility issues, um, and there's a surprising number of thing, a number of one, uh, you know, aspects to it that. Um, people just generally don't think about um, one of the most long stand, one of the most wide ranging ones is kind of uh, people on the autistic spectrum or um, the most common one which I've heard which I've seen and actually come across most often is people who are colorblind um, so colorblind uh, so colorblindness is something that affects um, I believe last figures was it was about one in five people in yeah. some form or other, and it's um, and generally speaking, it's like kind of something that you don't think about. So what you do, so what happens when you plonk, you know, something green and something red next to each other on a map, or you know, you give them a miniature that's painted blue and yellow, and yeah. suddenly they're just kind of staring at it. It's like. Well, what the hell have you given me? Because they literally don't know. Because it's kind of uh, thing of exactly. you, you wouldn't th like. It's not something that we that many people would assume. Yeah. Um, 
and it's these kind of considerations that we put that we're trying to put forward in both a modular and easy to digest way yes and then and the last half of that pdf will talk about uh, how to bring these kind of things into characters and pcs is is in a manner that's not offensive that's yeah. really good that's really good um because certainly in terms of the colorblindness um issue for example with board games that is becoming um more accessible um and you do see certain things um being taken into account um but for role playing i think yeah that that is still something that we need to do more of um and the fact that you guys are kind of um pushing this forward is really good and and you're you're giving you know, able-bodied people help and advice in terms of, you know, making things more accessible. I think that's fantastic. Um, that, that, uh, no, like, while that is the case, we are doing that, yeah. Um, that doesn't mean that we're, you know, kind of working entirely from that direction. Okay. The disability, were, uh, the disability PDF, while it doesn't go absolutely into it, um, like this is kind of my side of it. I really want to make it as accessible as possible um, so that that way people with different abilities can read it and it kind of becomes their first introduction One uh, into role-playing or anything like that. Um, one of the big ways that people get introduced to role-playing games is word of mouth. But if you can't get to the table, you're never going to get in. Um, so basically the books become important but there are sadly almost no, like, um, you know, reading de uh, descriptive audio for any role-playing game book. There is no easy read for any role-playing game book, yeah. except for some of the reference, uh, reference material. And sadly, the whole point of the reference material is you've already read the books, you just need it to, ref to refer. So we want to make this kind of system where... While, yes, we're having people who, you know, are the layman, they can kind of imp improve their craft and kind of be able to cater to these people. We also want people like myself, like, uh, like Brian, like Jaron, to be able to kind of put, for put themselves forward a lot better. Of course, definitely. Um, so um, sort of wrapping up a bit now, um, in terms of the near future, obviously, I know you've got the get on the go, um, but I know that you guys as a whole are a huge, fantastic community. Um, and I think there's a definite emphasis on there as well as you um, yeah. doing these projects. So for people who, say, are watching now and have, have not heard of you, what's the best way for them to get involved in the community? We have a Facebook community group oh, you can just send a request through that we have a YouTube oh, channel or, or which if you watch any of the videos oh, from like 2016 have my private email so you can contact me directly hey, you can hit any of us up on Facebook I'm very active on Twitter, where we're kind of developing um, a rather small but rather active um, bunch of people from the Pug community over there. Um, there, you know, generally speaking, we're still building ourselves up, but it's very, very active and it's a very, very responsive group, and we're very open. So, like, seriously, hit us up. Um, you'll find us at Power Up Gamers, a role plays for accessibility. Um, you can find our email addresses anywhere. And if you're interested just purely in um, supporting us in any kind of way, um, go on to Drive Through RPG and look up Power Up Gamer. Um, Power Up Gamer, not with an S. Um, and there you will find all of our present catalog. Um, and pretty much that's going to be increasing as months go by. So we're trying to, we're going to be releasing quite a steady schedule, uh, steady drip. Uh, and also, oh, oh, my, probably 
by January, we'll be a- able to uh, find us on Patreon. On, and quite possibly we'll have our own website and domain by then. That's a mm-hmm. Fantastic. And what I'll do is I'll leave some links in the description so people can click onto them. But in the meantime, is there anything you'd like to say to your fans, uh, to fellow gamers who are watching currently? Uh, I would say donate. We're working right now. We're all together for a specific thing. We are here for Con Plus One. Uh, Jason very kindly has put us on and let me wear this uh, very lovely hat. Um, But it still is the case that we're doing it for a reason. And that is because we are here to assist child's play. We are here. We are funding. uh, We are funding in order to help children while they're going through a very tough time. Um, I am a, I, when I was four years old, I went into hospital and it's got nothing to do with any of my like learning disabilities or anything like that. It was entirely medical and it was the most terrifying, uh, two weeks of my life. And, you know, I, there were people there whose job it was, was to spend time with me. Um, and they were funded by organizations like Charles play. And so donate as much as you can, uh, donate whatever you can. Um, it doesn't matter if you can't donate anything. doesn't matter if you don't donate anything. The point is, is that we are here for that. And donate. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I personally would love to thank the RPG community as a whole. They've given us a lot of support throughout the years as uh, Power Up Gamers as a community has officially donated over $500 to various uh, charities with almost 250 volunteer hours. And, and, and we're looking to basically double that within this next year. Uh, and part of that is doing things like Com Plus One and and, and donating our, our time and resources to uh, help child play, which is just a fantastic organization. And it's done a lot of good throughout the years, and we're going to keep on supporting it. And hope all our fans do too. That's fantastic. And thank you to both of you and also to Brian as well uh, for coming on today and spending some time with me talking about your products, about you guys. Um, We're going to wrap it up here. Thanks anyway for coming on. And as you guys tend to say a lot, may your dice roll forever in your favor. Hey, I'm Leith. I'm from Power Up Gamer. And this is me telling you to donate. So donate.